Hello everyone, welcome to Weekly Contest 298. My name is Sanjay Dudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe. And here I will be solving the question Sum of Numbers with Unit Digit K. Also in case if you are interested in rest of the solutions of the Weekly Contest, they are already stated in the description below. So do check them out if you like it. Now let's get started with understanding the question. Lead code 2310, Sum of Numbers with Unit Digit K. And Let's take the same example that was specified in the question. We have the first test case as the total sum should be equal to 58 and the value of k is 9. Also it was specified in the question that the k value would lie in the range of 0 till 9. And the first possibility of answer is 9,49. The second possibility of answer is 19,39. The third possibility of answer is 29,29. And if you carefully see that then both the conditions are met wherein the unit digit for each integer in this set happens to be 9 and the sum of these two elements is 58 same here as well unit digit is 9 sum is equal to 58 unit digit is 9 sum is equal to 58 now let's carefully analyze the possibilities for answer and let's draw inferences out of it so the for as per the first constraint the unit digit of each element in that set should be equal to k then we are pretty sure that all the elements that would be part of the answer set will have 9 as its unit digit we are not sure of the number of digits that would lie in this set but we are sure that the, its unit position would have 9 on it that's why i have written x9 because anything can come over here and y9 again and, and any other digit can come over here it could be 9 it could not be 9 what we are interested in we are interested in identifying the number of digits that would lie as part of this set and how that can be identified it's really simple let's rand sum these two elements up so what do we get? We get 9 plus 10x plus 9 plus 10y and this should be equal to 58. We are aware of it. So a 9 plus 9 gives you 18. So 18 plus 10x plus 10y happens to be equal to 58. And this would turn out to be 10 into x plus y should be equal to 40 and 10 as a common factor gets cancelled out so what equation do we have in the end it is x plus y equals to 4 and if you carefully see then there are multiple possibilities for this and the first one is 0 comma 4 so x is acting as 0 y is acting as 4 the next one is x is acting as 1 y is acting as 3 and the third one is x is acting as 2 y is acting as again 2 here in this example i was sure that there were only two numbers that would add up till to give us 58 and those will have 9 at its unit place but how can we be we be sure of the number of integers that would sum up to give up the desired set let's try and derive the mathematical formula for it let's assume that the total sum that we are interested in is t and the number of integers that would be present as part of the final answer is i so we will have i numbers in our final desired set and let's try and derive the mathematical formula for it so t would be equal to k into i so k into i plus 10 into x plus y plus z up till k times something like this and let's take this k into i to the other side so we will get t minus k into i and in order to support this equation further what should be the value of k, t minus k into y it should be divisible by 10 then only we can say that this will give us the values of x y and z and so on in integer format in case it doesn't give us the values in integer format then the answer will not exist so if you carefully analyze this equation up then you will see that t minus k into y should be divisible by 10 and we will be identifying that factor of k that leads to such a desired result so if you are still confused don't worry let's take another example so here the test case says 
the total sum that we are looking out for is 56 and the value of k is 9. So let's try and use the same equation t minus k into i. Is it divisible by 10? Let's try and check, check out for various possibilities for i. So uh, let's take the first possibility 56 minus 9. What does it give? It gives us 47. 47 is not divisible by 9. So let's skip this answer. This can't be the answer. Let's shoot for the next one. 56 minus 18. What does it give? It gives you 48. And again, it is not divisible by 9. As a result of which, i equals to 2 will not be an answer. So let's shoot for the next one where we are considering i happens to be equal to 3. That means the size of our set would have 3 elements in it. So 56 minus 27. 3 into 9 is 27. So let's subtract it up. What do we get? We get 29. 29 is not divisible by 10 as a result of which we will say that i equals to 3 will not be the number of elements that would be there in our final answer set. So let's shoot for the next one. Let's shoot for i equals to 4. So uh, let's calculate the equation 56 minus 4 into 9. It gives us 36. 4 into 9 is 36. So 56 minus 36 gives us 20. And you will see that 20 happens to be divisible by 10 as a result of which i equals to 4 will give us the desired result. So let's create 4 elements in our set and let's have 9's set to its unitary positions. So we have 9 set over here and uh, let's calculate the remaining sum that we need to fill in. So what is that remaining sum? That remaining sum is equal to 20 and it can be easily filled in by various possibilities. So you can have 2 set over here or the other possibility is 19 comma 19 comma 9 comma 9 so these are the two possible answer sets that could form the your desired result so if you carefully check then these would sum up till 56 and it has 9 in its unitary positions so the problem reduces to identifying this equation t minus k into y divisible by 10 if you are able to identify this particular equation in your interview, then your work is done. The other thing to take away over here is the digit at the tens position really doesn't matter. 2 can come over here because we need to fill 20 as the remaining sum what is left out of 36 and uh, we can use 2 here, uh, tw that means 20 here and or we can use 2 tens as done over here. There are multiple possibilities of answer and that could be generated and we should not be concerned about the tense position. I hope you got the context. Let's try to think of another possible corner case which is equally important and that is this one. The total sum that we are looking out for is 70 and the value of k happens to be 7. So at what index do you think uh, the equation will be met? This one t minus k into i is divisible by 10. It would only occur at the value i equals to 10 and that's why i've written 7 10 times so if you see that uh, 70 minus 7 into 10 gives you 0 which is divisible by 10 we can say that uh, we will need 10 sevens in order to derive the total sum of 70 such that each number ha has 7 at its unitary position so we can say that in for this particular solution the answer is 10 now let's try and increase the value of total sum to 80 so if we do that then again you will see t minus k into i is divisible by 10 only at i equals to 10 so for i equals to 10 this equation is again met and let's try to derive it up 80 minus 7 into 10 so what do you get you get 10 10 is divisible by 10 as a result of which we can say that uh, the the number of integers that will be there in our set is 10 and let's create those numbers up so here i've created 7 10 times written 7 10 times and the remaining sum that we are looking for happens to be 10 so we can fill in 10 uh, that means 1 at the tens place in any of the number so the first possibility of answer is this one the second possibility of answer is this one 
the third possibility of answer is this one so we'll have 7 here and we'll have 17 here the rest of the numbers would be 7 and there can be more possibilities can be generated out of it so you can have 117 in your answer set and the rest of the numbers would be 7 now let's try to increase the number further here in this case the total sum is 90 and the value of k is again 7 so you will yourself see that the condition is met for i equals to 10 so 90 minus 7 into 10 what do you get you get 20 and 20 happens to be divisible by 10 therefore we need to add 20 more to our desired set and 20 more can be added as 2 in the 10th place so let's add 2 over here the other possibility of answer could be 17 comma 17 and rest of the numbers would remain as 7 so if you carefully see then both the conditions are met and we get the desired result at i equals to 10 so what is the inference that we have taken from these three examples 90 80 and 70 you will you can say that the value of i the number of elements in your final answer set would always be less than equal to 10 it can't go beyond 10 this is a takeaway now let's quickly walk through the coding section and conclude it up so here i've written a corner case if nums happens to be 0 i return 0 if k happens to be 0 and nums is divisible by 10 that means we need to there is one possibility of answer and in case it is not divisible by 10 uh, then answer can't be generated and therefore we need to return minus 1 in those cases otherwise we create a i loop that is basically as per the equation that i talked about in the presentation i is equal to 1 i i into k is less than nums and we can also write i is less than equal to 10 i plus plus we check nums minus k into i happens to be divisible by 10 if that is the case then we have found out the number of integers needed and we simply return i in those cases otherwise we go ahead and create minus 1 so let's try this up accept it the time complexity of this approach happens to be constant time because we are sure that this loop will be iterating over 10 times in the worst case so we can say that the time complexity is order of 1 and space complexity is again order of 1 with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and rest of the solutions are also available please do have a look at them